Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Last show, we were showing you some of the cool hatchlings, but we had so many, it had to pour over into a part two, and that's what we're gonna do today. You're watching Snake Bites. The last show was all about baby snakes, and we had so many babies that we had to break it up into two parts. So let's go ahead and dove right back in because I've got some cool stuff I can't wait to show you, starting with this clutch right here. Wow, look at these beauties. These are actually tyrosinase positive or T positive albino Nelson's milk snakes. Now what's interesting about this mutation is it's what they call allelic, which basically means when you take this T positive animal and breed it to a T negative or normal albino Nelson's, half the babies come out T positive right off the rip. And I tell you what, they're absolutely gorgeous animals and I'm so excited to be producing them. Now another milk snake, or actually a king snake that I'm producing that I'm always excited about are these Arizona Mountain Kings. They call them pyros and again, they're just really beautiful. They have tons of triads and they're just really incredible animals. We also work with albinos and hypos of this gene. But I tell you what, even the normal variety is just super cool. What country does Brian most want to visit that he hasn't already been? A, South Africa, B, Indonesia, C, Costa Rica. Go ahead and answer in the comments down below and check back later in the show to see if you were correct. This week's Reptile Report and Snake Bites TV Spotlight is the Bush League Breeder Club. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click the link in the description. Now we incubate our eggs right on top of these racks because this room stays at 82 degrees, which is exactly what baby colubrids need to hatch. Now I just love boxes like this because it's just a complete potpourri. Look at all these cute baby snakes, but there's a whole bunch of different stuff in here. I can spot right now there's hypo corn snakes, there's ghost corn snakes, there's even these really cool Okatee sun kiss. Look at that right there. Now that's a gorgeous snake. There's also little stripe corn snakes, right, like this. Now this would be a striped okatee, but this is actually a striped motley sun-kissed okatee. Now that is a gorgeous snake, and there's actually a handful of other beauties in there as well. Man, that's a lot of corn snakes, look at that. That's a lot of little mouths that need to get fed and need to get set up right away. But I tell you what, the setup part, that's for another show. Let's move on to this box here. Now there's some really cool California king snakes in here. There's the typical just desert fades cow king, which is a black and white cow king. These of course are high white black and white cow kings or desert fades. Then we actually have some albino coastals, which are the orange and yellow animals, whereas the albino deserts are white on yellow, which makes a completely different animal. And there was one little beauty in here that I saw earlier that I absolutely loved. Now take a look at that, a solid big boy black stripe down its back. That's one cool animal, and this is the first one we've ever hatched like this, so this one's definitely gonna be keeper, and we're gonna hopefully produce some more of these in a couple years. Let's keep moving on. There's a lot of baby snakes here to go through. Look at this swatch of baby corn snakes that just hatched out. There's about 40 corn snakes right here, and you can see the majority of them are just normal, corn snakes, but there's a couple little gems in here hiding out like this one here, and uh oh, I might be in trouble now because corn snakes are going all over the place. I gotta somehow get them back in their box. Holy cow, this is gonna be really a mess. Oh, this is the worst thing that can ever happen. The snakes just popping out all over the place. Oh, I'm in trouble. There's no way to look at this. I think I'm gonna have to get these guys put into a bucket or I'm gonna be in big trouble. There's no way I'm getting them back in this box. I'll be right back, guys. Whenever you have baby snakes getting loose, the best thing to do is just grab a bucket. That way you can put them all in here, just like this, nice and safely, and hopefully none of them escaped. Let's see what we got, I know I saw scale. Look at you little bugger over there. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> now the trick is to get this box closed up and get these babies set back up. Holy cow, look at this, guys. It's a bucket of snakes. <laughs> How cool.
cool is that? <sighs> Tell you what, each day truly is like Christmas during this time of year. There's just so many baby snakes and they're all just so cute. Take a look at this. This is just a whole big clutch of ghost corn snakes. Again, it's not like ghost corn snakes are super rare or anything like that, but they're just a really beautiful snake and it's just really exciting to hatch anything. Now, speaking of ghost corns, these are one step further. These are what we call ultra ghosts, which is basically just a bloodline of ghost corns that we've been breeding for the last few years, which is basically taking the cleanest ghost corns together and you get these really uber clean ghost corns. And when they get older, they get really pink as well. So they're just a really gorgeous snake. So I'm excited to see some more baby ultra ghost hatching. And how about these guys? Now I tell you what, corn snakes, are one of my favorite, and one of my favorite corn snakes happen to be diffused corns. These guys used to be called blood red corn snakes because basically you're taking all of the yellow out of the animal and making it predominantly red as it gets older. As a matter of fact, the majority of the color will literally go away and you'll hardly be able to see a pattern. And that's why they call them diffuse corns rather than blood reds because look at this animal here. This is actually a black diffuse corn or what they call a granite corn. Now obviously because it's a black corn and it has no red, the name Blood Red probably doesn't fit, hence the name Diffuse, and it's a perfect name for these guys. I gotta now get them all back in the box. Now snake eggs are kind of interesting because they're not like a chicken egg and hard. They're actually really leathery and they're actually squeezy. Now what happens is at about 60 days of incubation with most colubrids, the snake will have what's called an egg tooth and they will literally slice that egg and as you can see with this little guy right here, they'll stick their head out and they'll start to blow bubbles and that's the very first breath that a baby snake ever takes. You guys know I've been talking about my love for rat snakes and these guys are one of the cooler ones that I work with. These are actually a beauty snake. They call them Chinese beauties and they get pretty large. They'll get five or six foot in pretty healthy body. Now they don't have a lot of eggs, about 10 or 12, but the eggs come out like that big and you can see how large a baby snake like this hatches. Right off the bat with that large head and that thick body, it's going to be able to take a fuzzy mouse right off the smack. So that makes it really good when you're trying to care for them. You don't have to worry about finicky babies when it comes to beauty snakes. Now take a look at these guys here. These are Brooks King snakes, but these are white-sided Brooks and look at how aggressive they hatch out. Now these guys make great pets and they tame out tremendously when they get older, but they're just really feisty as soon as they come out of the egg. And there's nothing like opening up a box of 15 or 20 king snakes, just have them all rear up at you and strike and they're so feisty. Again, that goes back to what I was saying before, when these guys hatch, they're out on their own. They've got to fend for their self. And if they're not feisty, they're probably not gonna live. Now, these are a bunch of cow kings here that are pretty cool. We have chocolate cow kings, which is a melanistic cow king. You can still barely see the stripe down it, but again, all of that yellow is basically masked. And this is what we are really going for with that chocolate gene, which is a snow cow king. That's basically a chocolate, bred to an albino and then bred back and you get a pure pink snake. That's just a gorgeous animal, it has no pattern whatsoever. And another cow king mutation in this box is what they call a ghost cow king. Again, it's a recessive mutation, it's a pattern and color mutation, and we've actually been producing some pretty interesting mutations from that ghost cow gene, so it's pretty exciting. And lastly, we have a whole swash here of albino Brooks Kings. Again, just like those albino white-sided, it's the exact same snake, but instead of being a white side mutation, this is the albino mutation. And they're, again, just as feisty as the other ones, and I absolutely love how aggressively they feed. As you can see, guys, we have a ton of colubrids, and we still have this whole row to still hatch, and you know what? It's not just colubrids we're hatching. So let's go ahead and look at some pythons that I brought over this morning.
So ball pythons are still hatching like crazy, and these are animals that I just pulled from the incubator this morning, and we've been hitting some pretty cool stuff. I wanna show you some of the highlights of today. Now this happens to be a ghost pastavi. The ghost gene is recessive, and the pastel and the Mojave are co-dominant, and they're just really beautiful snakes. But the one animal I was really shooting for in this clutch, and I'm so happy we hit it, was this ghost spinner Mojave. So again, it's a ghost gene, spider, pinstripe, and Mojave. Just can't wait to see what this thing looks like in a few months. It's gonna be ridiculous. Now these animals aren't necessarily cutting edge because we've been producing them for the last few years. But I tell you what, every time I hatch these guys, I get excited and that's azanthic pinstripes. Now azanthic is a mutation that's recessive that reduces the yellow in an animal, hence leaving this silver and black snake. And they're just really gorgeous animals. This next clutch, was a cool clutch. I can't wait to show you guys. It was a little bit of a surprise too, because we actually didn't realize there was a fire gene attached to a pinstripe female that we bred to a banana pin, and we produce these really cool fire spinner blasts right here. That's a really cool animal. And of course, we hit a dragonfly as well, which is essentially just a fire lemon blast. And it's just gorgeous animals. But I tell you, I was really going for some banana stuff, and we hit this lemon blast banana, which is just really beautiful, but the real gem that I was so excited about is this fire pinstripe banana. That fire gene attached to the banana and pinstripe just makes the animal completely pop. And when this thing's a year old and that fire gene really brightens it up, holy cow, is that gonna be a ridiculous animal. I couldn't be more excited about it. And speaking about excited, I really like the red stripe mutation. It's a co-dominant mutation. And this year, we bred it into a fire yellow belly. We were hoping for that triple mutation, and sure enough, we hit it. This is a fire yellow belly red stripe. I tell you what, this is my favorite red stripe mutation that we've seen to date. I think there's some big, big future in this project, and I'm just geeked that I'm involved in it. It's so exciting. And lastly, we bred kind of a chocolate thing going on. It was actually a chocolate bee to another chocolate lemon blast, and we had some really cool animal. Obviously, there's just a chocolate lemon blast, which is really cool. You guys know I love the earth tone stuff, so it's always exciting and we hit this pastel super chocolate which is again really cool because the super chocolates are those really dark rich colors and then you throw the pastel gene in there it kind of diffuses it out it's really cool and then we hit a handful of camel ball pythons which is always cool now those are the super chocolate pinstripes they're just so beautiful and so clean this was a cinepin het for albino bred to an albino pinstripe, and we hit the albino cinepin. Now, we produced a couple of these last year, and the cinnamon gene mixing with the albino just makes them that much more orange, and as they grow older, they get prettier and prettier, so I was excited to produce another one this year. And speaking about excited, this clutch was really cool. Now, this was a fire specter bred to a yellow belly. Now, when you breed a specter to a yellow belly, it's something that they call a lelic, and about one in four animals you're going to produce a super stripe and they're gorgeous snakes we've been producing them for a handful of years but we we're kind of hoping that we would see a fire super stripe and sure enough that's what we hit right here now the fire gene is an enhancing gene so as things get older they get brighter and brighter and even more clean so i really dig this fire super stripe but i tell you what i really hit the crown jewel in this one and that was a fire pinstripe super stripe. Now we had produced fire pinstripes before and we produced pinstripe specters before, but never the fire pin super stripe. Can't wait to see what this animal gets like in a year's time. It's definitely gonna be a hold back animal and to see what happens. Now speaking of hitting odds, I tell you what, I crushed it on this clutch. I bred an albino clown to a double head albino clown. Now on average, you should get about one in four albino clowns. There was five eggs, and I got four albino clowns, and one clown het for albino. How's that for killing the odds? And to boot, they're all females, which is really cool, because female clowns are just valuable as could be. I have a feeling I'm gonna be hanging on to a bunch of these guys. And lastly, I was so excited to see these guys hatch this morning, because they're just so incredible. 
And that was a pastel hat for clown bred to a killer clown. And take a look at this pastel clown right here. This is probably the prettiest pastel clown that I've ever produced. I mean, it's just got really light sides, an incredible connecting pattern. It's just unbelievably gorgeous. So as you can see, it's a great time of the year to be a snake breeder. We couldn't be more excited about the animals we're hatching. I tell you what, we've got a long way to go. It's going to be an awesome season. Alright guys, it's getting to be the end of summer, so I know for a lot of you that means going back to school and you gotta deal with your boring math classes, science, history, all of that fun stuff. I wanna know if you guys could pick any fun class to add into your school schedule, what would it be? Would it be a Call of Duty class? Would it be a How to Survive a Zombie Outbreak class? Leave a comment and let me know. What country does Brian most want to visit that he hasn't already been? If you said A, South Africa, you're 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. There sure are some amazing animals hatching. What a cool time of the year. And if you want to follow any of those adventures, make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Just basically it's lacking some of the black pigment or melanism but it's not albino and it gives it that kind of purpley hue which is really gorgeous plus just the attitude on this guy